I'll deal with common urological problems, their diagnosis and management in a sensible fashion so that it helps with your management for your patients. I'm Dr Neil Gordon and today's topic is catheters. I'll go over which ones to use, when to use them and when not to use them. If you like what you hear and see, please give a thumbs up. Also, please consider subscribing and giving a little click on the notification bell so that you're notified of when new videos appear. Catheterization is the second most common procedure carried out by junior medical officers in a general hospital. The most common is inserting an IV cannula. As a result, it's important to know which catheters to use and when to use them. This is a Foley catheter. It's called a Foley catheter because it has a balloon at the end which is inflated using 20 mils of water to retain it in the patient's bladder. Water is the only thing that should be used to inflate the balloon because other products have a tendency to deflate too quickly, such as air. Saline may crystallise within the tubing and prevent deflation when time of catheter removal occurs. There will always be some air in the balloon, which is the air in the tube, prior to the injection of the water. There is no need to inflate and deflate a catheter balloon prior to catheter insertion to test the balloon in modern catheters. This is a size 12 catheter for comparison. Smaller catheters have a tendency to curl up in the bulbar urethra in the male patients. This often occurs when sphincter spasm happens as a result of the reflex when the catheter tip touches the distal urethral sphincter. The problem with catheters curling up in the urethra is that significant damage may occur and if the balloon is inflated prior to obtaining urinary drainage, then a ruptured urethra may occur, requiring treatment in the future. This is a female catheter beside a male catheter. It's considerably shorter because the female urethra is only approximately four centimeters long and therefore not necessary to put in a male catheter. This is called a Neloton catheter. It is used for clean intermittent self-catheterization in patients with reduced bladder tone and a continent sphincter. There is no balloon on the end. It is inserted, the bladder drained, and then withdrawn. These are portable versions of self-catheters. Female on the left, male on the right. Removal of the male catheter from its container is really quite simple. The container is unscrewed and the bag is pulled out. This is the collection bag which is then unfolded. The catheter which is pre-lubricated is unscrewed from the container and the container withdrawn over the top. This is a full length catheter but it's not shown on the screen. The female catheter is very simple. It's simply unscrewed and withdrawn. There is a small filter. The lady inserts the catheter, drains it down the toilet, then removes it. The tape measure gives an idea of the size. This is a 22 French, 60 mil, pure silicon, three-way catheter, sometimes known as a hematuria catheter. It is called a three-way catheter because there are three arms, the balloon arm, the drainage arm, and an inflow arm for irrigation, usually carried out with saline solution. Once the irrigation is finished, a stopper may be placed over that arm to seal it off. Three-way catheters are usually inserted after procedures such as transurethral resection of the prostate and sometimes after transurethral resection of bladder tumours. The irrigation is designed to prevent blood clots forming and subsequent blockage of the catheters. This is a coude catheter. It is much stiffer than the pure silicon catheters and has a hard tip 
with a pointed bulbous end, which is designed to be manipulated through narrowed urethras. If not used carefully, this can cause a significant amount of damage and should not be used except by experienced operators. This is a bladder irrigation syringe. In this configuration, it may be attached to a resectoscope or cystoscope in the operating theatre in order for aspiration to be carried out. When the cone tip is applied, it may be attached catheter for manual washout of debris, clots and other such collections. When the blue tip is attached to the cone, it may be used for inflation of the catheter balloon. This is an example of a urethral sound or dilator. These are used in the male for stretching urethral strictures. They were called sounds in ancient times because they were used to tap against potential bladder stones indicating the presence of the stone. Urethral dilators should only be used by experienced operators and should generally be used prior to attempting insertion of a catheter with a catheter introducer to ensure that the lower urinary tract is patent and continuous. This is a catheter introducer. It is designed to stiffen the catheter to allow it to be guided into the urethra in the male patient. It is usually used after such procedures as transurethral resection of the prostate. It should not be used by inexperienced operators. Prior to inserting the introducer, it is necessary to lubricate the drainage channel of the catheter with lignocaine jelly to enable it to be easily introduced Care must be taken to make sure that the introducer does not slip out through one of the drainage holes. It is pushed to the end and then clipped on at the handle. This is one example of a suprapubic catheter. Suprapubic catheters are inserted through the lower abdominal wall approximately two centimetres above the midpoint of the pubic symphysis. They are usually inserted when it is not possible to pass a urethral catheter. Sometimes suprapubic catheters are used for permanent urinary drainage. This catheter has a sharp metal trocar which is inserted through a stab incision as previously described approximately two centimetres above the pubic symphysis in the midline. It has an aspiration port for collecting urinary specimens and a balloon which may be inflated using a needle and syringe. The balloons hold five mils of water. When selecting a catheter in the male, the most narrow part of the lower urinary tract is the urethral meatus and the appropriate catheter should be chosen accordingly. Generally speaking, most men will take a size 18 catheter or at the very least a 16. These catheters are easily passed through the urethra and because of their relatively blunt ends and relatively firm structure, will easily push through. If a patient presents to the emergency department with hematuria and clot retention following a transurethral resection of the prostate, the best catheter to pass is a 22 three-way. With a 30ml balloon which is inflated in the bladder, it's better to put in a larger balloon so that it doesn't fall into the prostatic fossa when inflated. The continuous irrigation can then be used while the manual washout is carried out and that tends to save time. The Coudé catheter that we showed should really be regarded as an antique and a curiosity. I do not believe there is any need to use these catheters 
in this day and age. Thank you for watching. I hope it was informative. Please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing and clicking on the notification bell below for more to come. The next video will be a video showing male catheterization and how to do it. Cheerio.